Dr. Saleem Jha. I'm a liver disease specialist and a liver transplant surgeon. And I work as a consultant at Manipal Hospital, which is in Dwarka, Delhi, India. Today, we are going to talk about the state of drowsiness or sleepiness that is very common in patients with cirrhosis. And it has also been called as hepatic encephalopathy or hepatic coma in a few patients. Now, why does this condition happen? This condition happens because the liver is not functioning properly in any patient with cirrhosis and it is unable to clear out the toxins from the body. All the toxins that are produced in the body usually go through the liver and they are cleared out from the liver. However, if your liver is not functioning properly, this, these toxins may not be cleared out and then they might go and affect the brain. And this is what happens in hepatic encephalopathy. So initially, the patient may be uh, forgetful, he may be uh, slightly irritable or anxious. And as the hepatic encephalopathy progresses, the patient may become increasingly sleepy, drowsy, and he may be confused in his language. He might not be able to do simple calculation. He might have problems with uh, remembering the date and time, recalling faces. So all these are manifestations of hepatic encephalopathy. In advanced cases, the patient may be totally unarousable or he might be in a sort of a coma and he cannot be revived. But his hemodynamics, that means uh, pulse, BP, uh, and other parameters might be normal, but patient is not arousable because he's in hepatic encephalopathy or hepatic coma. And this has been graded between grade 1 to grade 4, and grade 1 is early changes of uh, maybe uh, slight anxiousness or forgetfulness or confused states, whereas grade 4 has been labeled as a hepatic coma. Our patient is continuously sleeping and he is totally unresponsive. This has been labeled as grade 4 hepatic coma or grade 4 hepatic encephalopathy. Now, nearly 25% of the patients with cirrhosis will have hepatic encephalopathy within the first, uh, first year, five years of diagnosis. And nearly 50% of all patients with cirrhosis might eventually develop hepatic encephalopathy. And it is one of the main complications that is the indication for liver transplant because this complication is associated, associated with nearly four times risk of mortality in patients with cirrhosis than without hepatic encephalopathy. So what should you do? You should visit your doctor or hospital immediately. The most common culprit is the ammonia which is absorbed from the gut and it goes and affects the brain. However, uh, uh, there might be a trigger that uh, trigger event that is causing the development of hepatic encephalopathy in such patients of cirrhosis. Usually, these triggers are uh, things like infection, dehydration, or stress, or any kind of surgery or procedure the patient has undergone. Constipation can be a triggering event. Development of acute kidney injury or hepatorenal syndrome can be a triggering event. Uh, massive upper GI bleeding or blood and vomitus might be a triggering event. Or development of ascites or infection in the body might be a triggering event. So the doctor will take this opportunity to rule out these possibilities. Also other things like intoxication due to alcohol or bleed inside the brain or infarcts can also be ruled out because the presentation might be similar in these conditions. Alcoholic intoxication can also precipitate hepatic enteropathy which needs to be ruled out by the doctor. Now, what is to be done in any patient of hepatic encephalopathy? First, we have to rule out the trigger events. Then, we have to rule out any diff any other diagnosis like bleed in the brain or infarct or alcoholic intoxication. Then, 
we have to start the patient on antibiotics because these toxins might be produced uh, by the gut bacteria and then they are absorbed in the circulation and then they affect the brain. So non-absorbable antibiotics like rifaximin may uh, help to control these bacteria present in the gut and uh, relieve the episode of hepatic encephalopathy. Also, patient has to be purged or enema or lactulose might have to be given to uh, release uh, all the fecal matter from the bowel because this is known to be a precipitating factor for hepatic encephalopathy or hepatic coma. So patient might be given enemas until he passes two to three soft motions per day, which is the current recommendation that the patient should not be constipated at all and if the patient gets constipated even for a day he might land up into hepatic encephalopathy or hepatic coma so that has to be protected against also we have to rule out infections also we have to rule out upper gi bleeding or bleeding in the gut and eventually all the patients with hepatic encephalopathy will be a candidate of liver transplant because uh, development of hepatic encephalopathy is a poor prognostic factor for uh, long-term survival in patients with cirrhosis. And the development of hepatic encephalopathy or coma is a definite indication that the patient requires a liver transplant. So, if you think there was useful information in this video and you benefited from it, then please like and share this video and subscribe to this channel so that more and more people can benefit from it. Thank you.